guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. I hope everyone's doing well. We're back in the stew for another video. In today's video, I want to take you guys through how to make this kind of like triumphant brass sort of melodies slash beats uh, for Jack Harlow. We're going to be using some different orchestral elements. It's going to be fire. I'm going to be breaking it down for you so you can do the exact same thing in your door. That is pretty much what we're getting into today. Don't forget to subscribe if any of you guys are new. And don't forget to check the free resources down in the description. That's pretty much it. Let's jump into it. All right, guys, so we're going to be breaking down each individual melody and then taking you through sort of the structure and the drums. So the first thing I wanted to do was create two melodies in the first instrument I was using. Because I noticed like with these tracks, sometimes the intros are different to the verse. So what I wanted to do is create like an intro melody, which I'm going to play for you now, and then a verse melody with the same VST. So the VST I'm using is kind of trombone in BBC Symphony Orchestra. We got a staccatismo saying, which basically is gonna allow it to like, not really elongate. It's gonna have a really short attack and a really short decay. So it's just basically gonna be very stabby. So the intro melody goes something like this. So this might look a bit confusing to some people, but all this essentially is, is a D sharp chord with a fifth note, and then an A sharp chord with a fifth note here. And we're using the D sharp minor scale. We're using like four chords in a bar, and we're just alternating where we put them. So the first two, as you can see, we've got doubled up on a half beat, skip a half beat, put this one in, and the final ones on the fourth beat of the bar. And between that, you'll see on both chords here, we have a passer note. So we just drop down on the scale to just kind of allow a bit more movement. And that's the intro melody. And then the melody I'm using for the verse with the exact same sentence is like a deeper one. And it sounds like this. Again, we're kind of using those half beat sort of steps as sort of markers where we're going to put chords. So for the intro melody, we added a clarinet. And quite simply, actually it's not a clarinet, it's an English horn in contact in Cinewinds Pro here. So this is what this sounds like. So I just wanted a little something to add a bit of flavor for the intro. And all I've kind of done is create these runs just going up and down the D sharp Aeolian scale, like I said previously. Next up, I wanted some horns that weren't in BBC Symphony Orchestra to accompany the sort of main verse melody. So this is what we came up with. We've obviously got the exact same MIDI and we're using the English horn articulations for this one. I've just messed about with the close here. So alone this sounds like really tinny and not vibrant whatsoever, but when you kind of add them together, they sound a little bit nicer. So that's really nice and it doesn't sound as dry when you use them both together. So that was the sort of plan. It's just like a layering thing using the English horn articulations. Then we've got Scorch. So this was the last sort of melody we used and this was just kind of like a drone. Like if you listen sometimes in these tracks, they have like kind of like roadsy or kind of organ church felt drones. I just want to use something else. that's kind of like a, a drone that sounds similar. So we use Scorch. If any of you guys want to actually check it out, it's linked in the description. Use code JLib for an additional discount. We're using the piano and keys Mardina melody, and it sounds like this. Which doesn't sound like much. But when we add it with other melodies, it sounds great.
before we actually got into adding some drums, I wanted to add a melody for the bass. So instead of just using an 808, I thought let's make it a little bit more realistic because a lot of the instruments we're using here, or VSTs we're using here, are kind of emulating real ones. And if you listen to these sorts of tracks, they definitely have like real style basses. So for this one, I went into Romina 2. I've got on the vintage setting, that's the only thing I've already changed. And this is like a really simple bass line I came up with. So after that, I just went straight in on the drums. So basically, first thing we did, went into hi-hats and I just got on two step. There's no difference in the velocity or anything. And if you hear at the end of the four bar sections, there's like that kind of weird reverse sound. I achieved that just by basically automating a shaper box. This is the setting we've got. And then I've right clicked here, create automation. And then as you can see, we got it here and should activate now. Just adds a bit more of an interesting bounce. Then we came in with some snares, just doubled up. We got two here and they just sound like this in combination with the hi-hats. Then I wanted to add a unique open hat so that's what i did here we're using the source uh open hat from the colors drum kit just once to start the eight bar section and then i wanted to add some cool effects so when i was listening to like nail tech for example they had this cool laser sound so i've got this laser sound here and then i've done like my own thing with it with the delay which i'll show you in a moment so this is what it sounds like. So I've also doubled up a, another effect there. This one from my boy Jay, which is from the Ragnarok kit. So by adding those two, they sound fire. And then if I go into track 12, I'll show you the actual delay settings I've got. So here in the delay, we're actually in ping pong. And what I've done is I've moved this time knob up here, but we want to keep the tempo in pitch. We want the tempo sync, the pitch to stay the same. Ping pong mode and on a high pass. So it's just basically adding delay to those higher frequencies. And obviously it's a laser sound, so you wouldn't want any low frequencies from that. And then we've got the kick. The kick's quite a hard sort of pattern. I'll play it for you now. And what I wanted to do, because obviously you guys saw I put in a bass line, I wanted to alternate that with an 808. So the first eight bars uses the bass line, the second eight bars uses an 808. Exactly the same pattern here. This is what this sounds like. One important thing I wanted to show you here is I noticed they kind of like delay the drop in a weird way on some of these tracks. So instead of having everything come in when you expect it to, I have everything come in like two bars later, even though it shows one bar, like the kick and stuff won't come into the second bar. So I sort of show you why I've done that. I'll show you first without the effect, without basically removing these elements, and then I'll show you when I have them removed. Sounds nice, but this just sounds way better. I don't know why. Just hits harder. And then just in here, we're gonna alternate from the bass to the AOA. Just nice and hard.
but that is the end of the video guys i hope you guys enjoyed this one if you did please make sure you give this video a thumbs up comment below and let me know what you thought and don't forget to subscribe i appreciate you watching to this point if you want to support the channel further you can always check our store at the link in the description to level up your production today but yeah man that is pretty much it from me i'll play you guys a little snippet of this beat now and i'll catch you in the next one Yo, Jalib, send that pack.